Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans, at long last here is my review of the QMX River Song Future Sonic Screwdriver, as constructed by Nick Roboto and serious thanks to John Paul Gervais for making this review possible as there were only 15 of these ever made, so there was never a hope in hell of me getting my sweaty, overly large hands on one, so major thanks to John. Anyway, here we have the Sonic in its beautiful presentation box, which I'll talk about a little later on because right now it's time to take a look at the screwdriver itself. Alrighty, so here is the Future Sonic Screwdriver replica, and what a beautiful thing it is to behold. What surprised me about this replica initially was its weight. This is far lighter than I thought it would be. Don't get me wrong, it does have a good solid heft to it, and is obviously much heavier than the toy, but is much lighter than my own personal metal replica of this Sonic. Taking a look at the detail, the emitter lens looks beautiful, you can see the ridged sections, as well as some slight imperfections across it, which could be a side effect of the construction process, but I like it as it seems to further age the Sonic. Although, one issue is the grub screw, which leaves the emitter in an off-center position. The emitter head looks beautiful, and you can tell that this was handmade by Nick. There was no CNC work done here, so there are a few indents and so forth on the interior, but nothing that really bothers me. The oxidized copper effect has been painted on and looks very realistic, while the dampeners, which adorn the four struts of the emitter head, look beautiful. However, some are very loose and tend to swivel around easily. The collar has likewise been rendered perfectly with that sort of squashed ball section underneath it, as well as the trigger leading off to one side which houses the micro switch and two black wires protruding from it. It's also held on to the rest of the Sonic via these two brass clamp style sections. As for the main body of the screwdriver, it naturally features the neural relay cover, which is a little small and recessed, but you can see the grub screws holding it in place around this border design, while the hatch looks old and beaten up with the handle protruding from it. The rest of the body is covered in this exaggerated crackle design, which looks dirtier and much darker, adding to the aging effect. I really have to praise the paint applications here, this is just sublime. You can also spot two more grub screws near the side of the micro switch trigger, as well as two more near the bottom. The red setting switch rests just underneath the relay as well as these three green bits never been sure what these are perhaps switches but I digress. Descending from the trigger is the fluid link, just a small clear cylinder which connects to the user recognition ring. This looks just as fantastic as the rest of the Sonic and includes that faux oxidized copper effect as well. Now, what is particularly remarkable about this replica is that according to Necrobato, some screen use parts of the Sonic scene in Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead have been used to create this version, including the user recognition ring and these brass rings on the main body. How cool is that? So that means both Alex Kingston and David Tennant touched these sections of the Sonic at one stage. John, I hate you very deeply. <laughs> but this is so cool. And just brings me, as a Doctor Who fan, so much closer to the show. Nearing the bottom of the Sonic, there's not much else to talk about. However, this end cap is actually made from plastic, as opposed to the copper and metal pieces, which make up the rest of the screwdriver. You can also see the silver section right at the bottom of the end cap. So, when it comes to detail, this is perfection. Although, some parts of it could have been sturdier. Turning my eye to features now, and it of course offers light effects which are activated by pressing the micro switch. The emitter is lit by a white LED and shines brightly through the centre of the lens, but also nicely illuminates the rest of the tip when viewed side on. It's nice and bright, but doesn't feature sound effects, again very accurate to the prop, but I like my replicas to feature some sort of sound to accompany the light features. The blue emitter lens can be swapped out for a red version, but unfortunately the red emitter has gone walkabout, but as you can see on my own replica, the red setting would look something along the lines of this. But the really great feature of this Sonic is of course the neural relay, which is hidden behind this panel. Simply pulling the panel away reveals the relay, which looks excellent. Four of the green bars remain steadily lit, while the fifth at the top blinks on and off. I love how bright this looks, and it's so accurate to the neural relay as seen in the episodes. This is the standard option for the light setting, but Nick has personally customised this one to have an alternate setting. Flicking the red setting switch at the base of the relay changes the light pattern so only one bar is flicking, making it look exactly how it did when the Doctor first removed that panel, and making this the most screen accurate Future Sonic out of the 15 produced. Attention to detail like this has to be praised, and I think it's brilliant that you can switch between the full and nearly gone modes. Another bonus is the ability to still light up the emitter while the neural relay continues to pulsate. A trigger switch is embedded below the lights, which, when pressed, kills the LEDs, meaning that when the panel is replaced, the lights are switched off, conserving battery life. An excellent idea, 
but the panel is quite loose and comes off extremely easily, which is a bit of an issue when you have it on display, as the easily opening panel means that the batteries have a high potential of being drained should it accidentally pop off. Speaking of batteries, this takes a 12 volt 23AE battery which is inserted into the end of the Sonic. Pulling the plastic end cap off reveals the battery, which is connected via magnets. This can be a little weak and the magnets can slip off, so adding some electrical tape would be the best way to secure them. Looking at the box, I think this has to be the nicest display presentation I've ever seen. Yes, the box is designed to look like River's Diary. The cover is made from actual leather, which has been worn and aged over the top, along the edges, and on the sides there too. The back has no wear effect, but does have a sticker containing all that lovely legal shirt and fire to nerdum. Around the sides, we get this awesome page effect, which really does make it look just like a regular book. It's quite sturdy and heavy too, offering great protection to the Sonic. Opening the cover, this is just extraordinary. As you can see, there is a recessed section into which the Sonic can be placed, with the detail around it looking as though it's been cut through the actual pages, all the way down to the back cover. The Sonic fits snugly into here, but I do wish some sort of foam or softer material had been used to line this opening to further protect the Sonic and stop it from bashing off the edges. A plaque adorns the inside of the cover, which reads River Song Sonic Screwdriver Prop Maker Edition, personally created by Nick Roboto, and there you can spot his signature, as well as this being the first Sonic he constructed out of the 15 ever made, just adding to its uniqueness. John! <laughs> the old unstained paper effect is just the cherry on the cake, and when the Sonic is placed into the groove, it just makes for one remarkable display piece. Doing a size comparison, you can see that the QMX Sonic is more or less the same size as the Character Options toy, and my own custom Metal Sonic, but if you look closely, you can see the QMX Sonic is just slightly bigger by a very, very small degree. And of course, it's much bigger than the 10th Doctor Universal Remote, and is tiny in comparison to the Celestial Toy Store 11th Doctor Sonic. So overall, what do I think of this replica? Well, it is, of course, fantastic. The detail is striking, and the fact that all of it was handmade by Nick just adds to its charm. And when combined with its display box in the style of River's Diary, it is a monumental display piece. However, just like Nick's 11th Sonic, it is extremely fragile, and as such, I can only recommend it as something that must be viewed well on display, and seldom played with or taken to conventions. The loose neural relay panel and the weak dampeners are telltale signs that this isn't designed to take those knocks. But having said that, the fact that this Sonic in particular offers the custom neural relay setting and screen used parts just elevates it for me and I love it all the more. To see this on display, even merely resting on top of the diary design box, is truly a sight to behold for any Doctor Who fan. The future Sonic screwdriver is my all time favourite screwdriver design from the history of the show and to see it up close like this has made me beyond happy, as what I hold here is essentially the prop from the show. Cloaked in intriguing mystery, it has been a great honour to review it for you all, and let you see up close one of the most illustrious and elusive prop replicas ever made. And a sincere thank you to John for making all of this possible. You lucky son of a... And so that brings us to the end of this review. I really hope you liked it. If you did and you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe for more videos, and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.